Good morning, everybody. Welcome to South Lebanon. You join us in standing. Let's lift our voices in this Christmas time of worship. Amen. The shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here lay the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night. Oh, what a glorious night. Come on, sing it out. I hear the angels singing. Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know the love has come. Sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Yeah. The shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone in sight. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on the glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing, hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know the love has come, sing it out. Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is born, yeah. Glorious, glorious, what a glorious night, glorious. singing hallelujah let the earth receive her king i know the love has come sing it out jesus christ is born i hear the angels singing hallelujah let the earth receive her king i know the love has come yeah. Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is born. Star shining in the sky. Below in Bethlehem, the king is sleeping. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious Start in me. One voice speaks. 
speaks for the voiceless, hope for the hopeless, and then you well. One love brings us together, now and forever, and then you will. We'll sing it with us. We're singing glory, glory. There be peace, the singing glory, glory. Let there be peace, and let it start in me. Do not be afraid, His love is strong enough to save. pray that uh, this piece we sing of, that it would be uh, an outflowing of, of your love and uh, this story that we continue to celebrate and, and worship through and remember during this season. God, that uh, as we go out of this place after your word has been preached and uh, we share this time of worship with brothers and sisters, Lord, that we'd be a source of, of hope and joy and peace because of you who first loved us and, uh, and sent your son to, to come to earth in this way that we can relate to you knowing you bore the same weakness um, that we struggle with each day, this flesh that, uh, that lets us down, that falls short. But because we know you and because you, you, uh, you live this life perfectly, God, that we can share in the victory over death and uh, just this glorious life that awaits um, as we come into your presence and, uh, and see you face to face one day, God, I pray that our lives um, would share that peace and that joy through um, the rest of this season and, and through the entire new year that we're about to celebrate. God, over this worship service today, I pray, uh, pray your Holy Spirit continues to work um, through all of us and especially through Charlie as he, as he comes and shares um, words that you've given him. God, I pray you're free to work in our hearts and, uh, and Lord, as we continue this time of worship, that uh, we just continue to press towards you and, and to know you more um, this day and, uh, and the next day and the next after that. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to worship, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant the stars in the wintry sky joy of the father reach through the darkness shine across the earth send the shadows to fight No. 
of heaven come down King of heaven come down Let your glory reign Shining like the day King of heaven come King of heaven rise up Who can stand against us You are strong to save in your mighty name, King of Heaven, come. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Mild He lays His glory by, born that man the born may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give second birth heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king the newborn king king of heaven come down king of heaven come down let your glory ring shine in light of day of heaven come, King of heaven rise up, who can stand against us, you are strong to save in your mighty name, King of heaven come, King of As we continue, would you bow with me in prayer, please? Jesus, thank you that you came. Thank you for fulfilling all the prophecies that were given years before your coming. And thank you that as you came as a baby, you came to bring life, eternal life. And you entered a dark world and brought the light of the world. Thank you for living a perfect life, and thank you for going to the cross for us. Thank you for shedding your blood that we may have eternal life. Thank you that you bring peace, hope, and thank you that you never change. This morning we bow before you and cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And this morning as we worship you, we pray that you would receive all the honor and glory that you are due. Lord, as we look around our world today, the world is looking for peace, and we know the Prince of Peace. Help us to be the salt and light that you've called us to be. I pray for those, Father, who we support around the world who are sharing the good news of Christ. I pray that you would give them a blessing for their ministry right now and that you would use them at this Christmas season. May their ministry be fruitful and successful. May you provide for them. 
Lord, we pray for those who are today struggling and suffering because of their faith. I pray that you would give them a measure of your grace and mercy. Increase their faith. Help them to stand strong. Help them to continue to be a bold witness for you. Father, we're mindful of those who are struggling physically and ask for your hand of blessing upon them, hand of healing. Father, for those who have seen your healing in the past weeks and months, we, we just give you praise for that. And we thank you that in all of this, that you continue to accomplish your purposes in the lives of people, because that's what you promised. Father, for this church, we continue to pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance for the future, especially as we head into a new year, uh, Father, for the elder board as there's some uh, changes that are going to be made in terms of individuals on that board and as uh, there's decisions that need to be made, we pray for your hand of wisdom and guidance on the elder board. Father, as we continue to look for a senior pastor, Lord, would you please answer that prayer and give us a man that would be after your own heart, a man that would hold high your word, and be able to lead us and guide us. And we thank you for your word. It continues to change lives. It continues to impact people. And this morning, as your word is open, I pray that your word would, again, have the ability just to change our lives. And as we leave here, may we apply those things that the Spirit's tapping us on the shoulder and reminding us of or telling us we need to do. Thank you for blessing us as a church. Thank you for providing for us so richly. Thank you for the opportunity we have in the coming week here uh, to have the Christmas Eve service and the Christmas Day services. And Lord, if there would be those who would come and visit with us, we pray that the Spirit of God would impact their lives as well. Thank you, Father, for being so good to us. Thank you for being unchanging. Thank you for your love for us. May you accomplish your plans and your purposes in our lives, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. As we look towards the end of this week, uh, Christmas Eve is on Saturday, and we invite you to join us for our Christmas Eve services. There will be a service at 5 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock, there are identical services. And in between, you'll have the opportunity to see a live nativity, either as you're coming or going uh, for those services and uh, we encourage you to be here Saturday night for those. As, and then next Sunday morning, Christmas Sunday morning, there will be two services happening simultaneously at 9 a.m., one in here and one in the sanctuary, and we invite you to join us for one of those services. And just a reminder, there will be no Sunday school next week, and there will be no nursery care provided for that Christmas Day service. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45 is our passage for this morning, and I encourage you to follow along as I read that for us this morning. Starting at verse 39 in Luke 1, it says, In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And this is the reading of the word of the Lord this morning. Charlie, come speak to us. Good morning. Great to be together with you. Great to have the opportunity to worship our Lord and Savior. And uh, I do realize that probably some of you will not be with us next Sunday morning. So I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you uh, for the cards and the gifts and the letters that Jane and I have received. It's always a joy, and oftentimes we'll do that in the evenings uh, to open these cards and stuff and just uh, uh, to have the, uh, the encouragement. It's just been a wonderful thing. Love to see those with have pictures, and that's always a blessing, too, to see, uh, see the families. It's been amazing the number of weddings that we had, and the, they got married and they had children, and now some of them, three or four or more kids. 
Uh, so it's pretty phenomenal to see. So thank you for that. Now, 2023, the challenge is the same as it was 18 years ago when we started here. And that is to read through the Bible in 2023. Now, I know some of you have done that. I know a lot of you started and didn't finish it, okay? So what I want to share with you is this. I'm going to encourage you to take on this challenge. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to get a Bible that's probably easier to do that. And a read through the Bible Bible will help it have Old Testament, New Testament, and one of the Psalms or Proverbs every day for you to read. Makes it much easier. But I'm just going to ask you to consider doing that because I'll tell you what, it will be a great uh, thing to accomplish. You can do it in about 10, 15 minutes a day. That's about all it takes. But I'm also going to encourage you to sign up because there's a sign-up sheet back there and then also went out in front of the sanctuary. The reason to sign up is for the accountability factor in this. Now, most of us here have some time in our life have decided we want to lose a couple pounds and we're going to go on a, a diet, all right? If you don't tell anybody, okay, you don't tell anybody in your diet, Usually the first time that that chocolate cake with peanut butter icing comes by, you say, oh, well, and you take it and you eat it because you know what? Nobody else knows you're on a diet. But if they, people know you're on a diet, then there's an accountability factor in that. It's the same way with reading through the Bible. If you put your name on that list, then there's an understanding that you're accountable to do this. And I think it's a little bit more of a, uh, an encouragement to have that be accomplished. So I hope you will do that. I hope you'll take that over 2023. I think if you haven't done that before and you accomplish it, it is a great accomplishment that you'll be glad that you did. All right. That being said, again, have your Bibles open or your iPad, iPhone, whatever you got uh, to uh, to uh, these portions of Scripture that we're going to unfold here today. Uh, how many of you here this morning know what a woolly caterpillar is? Just show of hands. Some of you do, not all of you. Okay. Do, do, are some of you familiar with the old timers uh, prognostication of the woolly caterpillar? Okay, some of you don't know what to talk about. So, so this is the deal for you people who don't know fuzzy caterpillar, I don't know, about an inch and a half long, something like that. And and that fuzzy caterpillar has brown and black on it. So if the front of it's brown and the back of it's brown and it's a lot of brown and not much black, the idea was that it's going to be a mild winter. Okay, it's going to be a mild winter. But if you come across one of those that has a little bit of brown in the front and a little bit of brown in the back and a whole lot of black in the middle, the idea was you better buy another pair of long underwear, okay? Because it's going to be a really, really nasty winter. Somebody said a little while ago, if you see one like that, step on it, okay? But I uh, <laughs> don't know that's the best way to do it. But the, the aspect of signs of things to come, that's where I want to take you again this morning, signs of things to come. We're going to study about Mary going to see Elizabeth and Zachariah. And what I don't want you to miss in this tremendous amount of events that took place, signs that verified the fact of God had his hand upon all of this. Now, Elizabeth is in her sixth month. Uh, by the way, Mary's traveling to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth is in her sixth month of pregnancy. And Mary's pregnancy is very recent. She will stay with Elizabeth for about three months. I want you to think about that. So, Mary is going to see Elizabeth. She's going to be there for about three months. And, and what's going to happen in those three months is Mary's going to be encouraged. You need to understand that here's a young girl who is now carrying the Savior of the world. She has a lot of challenging things ahead of her. Yet at this point, Joseph does not know that she's pregnant. All right. So she knows she's got to deal with that. She also knows she has to deal with the people in Nazareth who knew that she was engaged to be married, but now she's going to come back in three months and she's going to be starting to show this baby. You need to understand the weight that she's carrying and you need to understand how what a blessing this would have been to be together with Elizabeth and Zechariah for these three months. Look with me, if you would, to verse 39. It says this. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. Now, the exact location of where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived is uncertain. We don't know the town that she went to. We do know that, again, she would have traveled a pretty good distance from, from Nazareth to where Elizabeth and Zechariah lived in probably some pretty rugged conditions, pretty challenging conditions. She's a young girl traveling by herself in what would be kind of a, a dangerous set of circumstances. You need to realize, and, and, and if you can get inside the mind of Mary, and that's really my goal in the midst of these, these messages, to think about what she struggled with and yet how God carried her through that. Because this morning, good chance, somebody here this morning struggling with some stuff also. And I just need you to see the love of God. I need you to see the care of God. I need you to see how the Holy Spirit walked through all this. Now, she's a young girl. And uh, we, were, we had the privilege this summer when we were up in the mountains 
the, the Little League World Series was taking place at the same time in Williamsport. Now, we went down there because my daughter-in-law's cousin's son was playing, all right? So we went down to see him. And, and if you ever get a chance to go there to the Little League World Series, what a, what a great environment, okay? What a wholesome environment. I would encourage you to go. But it was great to see. These kids were dynamite. I'm telling you what, 11, 12, 13-year-old boys and girls playing baseball, they were just phenomenal. What was different is this, because, man, ESPN, ESPN was there. Every one of these games, was they were under the lights. They were also under the cameras. And I, I told Jane, one thing that I see that I don't usually see when you're watching professional baseball is when they drop the ball or when they struck out, you see these, these young guys crying, okay? You just don't see that in professional baseball, right? And that's okay. Man, 11, 12 years old, with all that kind of pressure on you, man, I get it. I understand that. And I want you to, to have that same type of compassion and concern for Mary. She is carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders. She doesn't know how this is going to unfold with Joseph. She doesn't know what's going to happen with the people in Nazareth. She just knows what God told her. She's going to, carry, she's going to have the Savior of the world. And she's carrying an awful lot of weight with that very thing. So as she's going there to see Elizabeth, of course, she goes in haste. Again, this desire to get there as soon as she can to get the encouragement that she's going to get from Elizabeth. Look with me, if you would, to verse 40. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. At this point, Zechariah wasn't able to talk because of his unbelief. We'll talk more about that at the end of this message, the unbelief of Zechariah. But right now, it's the aspect of, of Mary showing up at Elizabeth and Zechariah's place. Now, this, please understand, you can't call ahead, all right? <laughs> it wasn't a deal where, she, where Elizabeth had any idea that she was coming, but all at once, all right, all at once, Mary is there. Now, I don't know what it's like for you guys, but boy, this aspect of seeing family that you haven't seen for a long time is a joyous thing. If all goes according to plan, next week, okay, my, my daughter and son-in-law and their family from Kentucky are coming up, and, and my, uh, my son and daughter-in-law from York, they're coming up. There's going to be 13 of us in our house for about three or four days. Don't you want to come and be part of that? Okay? It's going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be very loud. But when, especially when, when they get there, Jane and I are always looking out the window, know they're coming and stuff, looking out the window. And when their car pulls in, our doors, the house opens up, we go running out, and their doors and the vehicles open up, and the kids come flying, and just hugs and kisses and just rejoicing in the fact of being together. Picture Elizabeth and Mary coming and seeing each other and just the joy and the excitement and the hugs and the tears and the aspect of what a wonderful opportunity it is for them to be together. Elizabeth had to be surprised. We understand that part of it. But she also, evidently, God's going to let her know in a most wonderful way through the Holy Spirit exactly what's happening with Mary. Verse 41, and when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with with the Holy Spirit. Ladies, many of you sitting here this morning had the privilege of carrying a child. And uh, whether it was when Jane was expecting or other ladies we talked to, when you feel that first movement, when, when the first time that the baby kicks, exciting stuff, wonderful stuff. It's wonderful stuff. And, and how blessed you were to experience that moment. Us guys, we have no idea what you went through. Okay, we have no idea what you went through. Now, the other part of that equation is simply this. I've seen many of our ladies you know, get to that ninth month, you know, and they are ready to have that baby, okay? I've, I've yet to come across the mother in the ninth month who says, boy, I just wish this would go on for another month or so, okay? Never happened, all right? So, so we can't understand what it's like to carry a child. The closest we get, okay, the closest we get is when we go to Shady Maple and overeat, okay? And, and there's a bunch of you ladies saying about that. That's not it. That's not what it's like. I, I get that part of it, okay? But the joy of carrying a child and the joy of feeling that child with inside of you, and now I want you to see what's happening, okay? As Mary greets Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby, which is John the Baptist, leaps with inside of her. This is more than just a baby kicking. This is more than just a normal pregnancy. This is the reality that something great and wonderful is happening. It is a miraculous sign. I see these two ladies. Can you view this? There's a lady who's way, way old and should never be carrying a child, and she's there with a baby. There's another young girl who's a virgin, and she's also carrying a baby. And these two ladies, these two ladies know that this is all by the hand of God. 
And they must just be so celebrating and so rejoicing as they look at one another. Both of these babies would change the world. Jesus would forever and John the Baptist would prepare the way for him. I want you to think about the impact that both of these children are going to have in the world. Now, I also want you to think about Elizabeth and I want you to think about Mary. I want you to think about two ladies who are going to have a child. But yet down the road, whether they know it or not, I think Mary did more than Elizabeth. This child is going to die in a very horrific way. There is nothing that is more heart-wrenching, and we had to go through this just a couple weeks ago. There's nothing more heart-wrenching than to lose a child. Nothing. Okay? And I just want you to understand that I'm not sure if Elizabeth knew what would happen to John or not. The day would come, amazing following. I mean, the ministry that John had was phenomenal. Calling people to repentance, phenomenal. But the day would come when that child that she's carrying would be beheaded. And Mary, Mary would be there at the foot of the cross and experiencing something that would be the most excruciating thing a mom could ever go through. She's looking up, and there's her firstborn, her son, the savior of the world, in six hours of just torture for every breath. I just need you to realize these two ladies were rejoicing together at this moment, but in the future there would be a time of great sorrow. If you're willing to follow God's plan in your life, hear this very clearly. There are times of great rejoicing. There are times of great joy. But a lot of times there's times of great sorrow too. And just because you're walking through a time of great sorrow, it does not mean that God's not in it. It just means that he's allowing you to walk through a time that's difficult. And it's very, very important for us to realize that. Verse 42, look there with me if you would. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Now remember, Dr. Luke is interviewing Mary. And Mary is giving him a play by play by play of everything that happened when Jesus was born into this earth, okay? And I, she gets to this point, we're talking about Elizabeth, and you can almost hear her voice get louder. And with a loud voice, okay, Elizabeth was, was excited with a loud voice. She proclaims the fact that Mary is the mother of her Lord and Savior. How phenomenal. Now, remember, Mary's not showing yet, Okay. Please don't understand. You think that when, when Mary gets there, she's great with child. No, that's not the case. You need to realize she was not showing yet. But the Holy Spirit left, Mary, left Elizabeth know exactly what child this was and the wonderful joy of the blessing of the coming of the Savior. Now, we're going to talk just a minute about Mary. And I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I want you to understand something that's very important for you to understand this morning. Mary is blessed among women. Mary is to be honored, and Mary is to be respected. But Mary is not to be worshipped. Mary is not the savior of the world, Jesus Christ is. Mary is not a co-redemptress. I just want you to be able to differentiate between these two. Mary was used in a, in a wonderful way that she will be honored and respected forever. But only Jesus Christ can forgive sins. Only Jesus Christ, only God is to be worshipped. And I just don't want you to be confused about that. I want you to understand that Mary suffered, but Mary was also used in a phenomenal way by God. In fact, there's much to learn from the, from the Christmas story, lessons on submission to God, to be a servant. Mary demonstrated that in such a perfect way. She is blessed, she is to be honored, and she is to be respected. The heart and the plan that God had for her was phenomenal, as the plan is for you and I. Now, we talked about signs. I said before, here, here, is, here is Elizabeth rejoicing. The, the baby in her womb leaps, and she tells Mary, before Mary ever says, by the way, I'm pregnant, says, the child that you are carrying is my Lord and my Savior. All that happens, okay? How amazing, these signs that God gives. Remember, we talked about this two weeks ago, signs of things that have happened, signs of things that are happening, signs of stuff that's going to happen. Please know that we're only about halfway through all that God's going to do. Maybe a little more than that. The, re the reality is simply this. God's about to do something phenomenal, and I don't want you to miss that part of it. The prophecies that are ahead of us are great, and they are many. All right. That being shared, look with me, if you would, to verse 43. And why is this granted to me that my, the mother of my Lord should come to me? Don't get confused about this. A lot of people do. 
You need to understand, when we talk about Christmas, when we talk about the birth of Jesus Christ, that was not the beginning of his existence. You need to realize that God always was and he always will be. Jesus always was and he always will be. You need to remember that you go back to Genesis. God said, let us create man in our image, the plurality of the Trinity. You need to realize that, okay? So at 2,000 years ago, God said it is time to send a perfect sinless sacrifice. And he came in the, mo in the, in the way of a baby. And that's exactly what happened here with Christ. She is, and she says this, the mother of my Lord. Don't miss that, okay? Okay, so here's Mary. She's not even showing yet, but she's pregnant. She's carrying the Savior of the world. And, and Elizabeth says, the mother of my Lord. This child that's very small, that is with inside of Mary, is the Savior of the world. And he's Lord and Savior of both Mary and both Elizabeth and Zachariah and anyone who will trust him as Lord and Savior. It is phenomenal. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes people say, I don't get this, okay? You just need to understand God came in the way of a human being so he could pay the price for our sins upon the cross. Had to be completely God, had to be completely man in order for this whole thing to work. And that's exactly what happened and that's exactly what God did. And he came in the most humble of ways. I said this a couple weeks ago. Born in a place where they keep the animals. The most humble way. Why? Because Jesus is not just for the rich and the famous and the powerful and the important. He is for the poor and the needy and the brokenhearted also. No one, anyone, anywhere in the face of this earth, no one can ever, ever say they have an excuse that they can't give their life to Jesus Christ because they're not good enough. Nobody can ever say that. Everyone has the same opportunity. You can either trust him as Lord and Savior or you don't, but the opportunity is there and available for each one of us. All right, verse 44, look there with me. It says this, For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Now, let's go back to, to, to verse 15 of the same chapter, chapter 1. Remember, when, when God gave this information to Zechariah and Elizabeth, this is what he said about John the Baptist. For he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. This is the moment that verse 15 is fulfilled. The Holy Spirit now comes upon Elizabeth, comes upon John the Baptist. From that point on, John the Baptist is filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's going to do most wonderful and phenomenal things. These are all the things that Gabriel said. This is all the stuff. One sign after another sign after another sign where God says this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And it's going to happen out this way. And now Mary and Elizabeth both get it. You need to realize both of these ladies have been through a lot already. Okay? And both of these ladies must have rejoiced for the confirmation. What Elizabeth saw in Mary and what Mary saw in Elizabeth and how the, the reality of these two miracles. And it's all God. It's all God. He's got his hand upon it all. And how these two ladies must have been rejoicing. He's a great God. He's done and continues to do wonderful, wonderful things. Now, I don't know, and this is still, uh, again, something that we can't determine. I don't know how long Elizabeth and Zachariah lived after the birth of John the Baptist. They probably, probably would have not lived long enough to see him start his ministry. But God, remember, they were well long in years when they had him. How they must have rejoiced in the birth of this child. How they must have rejoiced to hear that, that how God's going to use him. How they must have rejoiced that he was going to be the forerunner of, of the reality of, of Jesus Christ. Of coming to earth as Savior. And he's going to be the one preparing the way. I don't, again, I don't know what they saw, how long they lived upon this earth. But again, the affirmation of that confirmation is so very important. Yeah, when it comes to the concept of you and I doing things for the Lord... It's, it's okay to ask God to help us in that process. In fact, it's good and right and acceptable to ask God to use someone else to confirm the calling he is placing on your heart. If you're here this morning and you are determining what you think God's calling you to do, and, and that can be anything from calling you to the ministry, to the mission field, to teach, to have an in-home Bible study, whatever, it's okay to ask someone else or ask God to say, listen, Lord, help me to see that I'm going the right direction. Help me to know that the call of my life is clear. This has happened multiple times for Jane and I down through the course of our life. From the aspect of thinking we we're going to be missionaries to the aspect of, of even coming into, into pastoral ministry. You need to realize God brought people alongside of us. Still happens today. Man, I still, I still got friends of mine, okay? That when I'm walking through something and I'm certain about, I can call them and talk to them. And how beautiful to have someone else to speak into your life 
the things that they're going through or the things that, that you might be going through and how they can help you in that process. If you're here this morning and you've got a big decision ahead of you and are unsure about what God wants you to do, it's fine, it's good, it's right to say, Lord, send somebody by me that can help me in making these decisions. And I believe God will do that very thing. Okay? That being said, let's go to verse 45 of our text. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Zechariah, remember, <clears throat> Zechariah was told that his wife Elizabeth, who's way up in years, is going to have a baby. And Zechariah said to the angel, how can this be? Now, evidently, because Mary says the same thing, how can this be? How can a virgin conceive? Evidently, big difference between what was in their heart and their minds, which God knows them both, okay? Zechariah's mindset must have been, there is no way this can possibly happen, Okay? And as a result of that response, he's not able to speak till after the birth of John the Baptist, after the naming of John the Baptist. Then, then, his, then his tongue's loose, he's able to talk again. But I just want you to understand, what Elizabeth is doing is Elizabeth is saying to Mary, blessed are you who believed what God told you is going to happen. So Mary believed it, Mary just saying, how can this happen? In other words, looking for instruction, looking for guidance and direction about how that's supposed to take place. They're still... The same thing for every one of us here this morning. Blessed are those who believe. And the question is this, what do you believe as you sit here this morning? Do you believe that it's possible that God came from heaven to earth, put on flesh, went to the cross, died for us? More than that, do you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Do you believe that that is the way that you can have eternal life? Do you believe that, that he's the only possible way for us to go from life here to life everlasting? Faith is critically important. In fact, listen to what we read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Do you believe? Do you believe? I got to tell you what, get a little fired up about this, and I shouldn't, but I get fired up about it. We live at a time period where people are all about make-believe, all about artificial intelligence, all about, all about stuff that is, is, is it's a fairy tale. It's not real. And what breaks my heart is there's, there, there's more excitement about what's not true and what's not real than there is about what is true. And we, have, we live at a time period where, where people reject the reality of Jesus Christ. Where, where all I hear at Christmas is it's a holiday celebration and not a Christmas celebration. Without Jesus Christ, there's no reason for Christmas, right? And I just want you to understand it's a burden on my heart. We are more excited about the make-believe and the pretend than they are what's true. <laughs> I hear it again and again. Better be good. Santa knows who's been naughty and who's been nice. Don't worry about Santa. <laughs> worry about God. And by the way, God said you're all naughty. <laughs> Whole bunch of you. Somebody's sitting back there, Ethel, I told you we shouldn't have come. He's saying we're bad. We are all naughty. There's not one of us that's without sin. Not one of us. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. And that's why Jesus did all this. You see, I'm not counting on me being good enough to go to heaven. I'm counting on what Jesus Christ did for me upon the cross. And this time of year is so critically important to me. Not because of all the stuff the world has put out there. But the fact that if Jesus had not come, I wouldn't have a hope in the world. And neither would you. It's so very important that we keep Jesus Christ at the center of what we're doing. But it's so very important that you believe, that you believe in Jesus Christ. I found this interesting. Denzel Washington, most of you know him as his fame as far as acting and stuff like that. He's become more outspoken in his Christian faith, which I'm very encouraged by. 
And he was doing, a, doing an interview, and he got tar- started talking about end times, which amazing, right? And he talked about the end times, and he said about people will be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. And then he went on to talk about the fact that all you see today is people taking selfies and then posting them on Facebook and willing to do all kinds of crazy nut stuff so that people like them. And he talked about the aspect of it being ridiculous. And then he went on to say this, don't play with God. Denzel Washington said, don't play with God. How important it is for us right now, right here, to know the greatness of God, to have the respect to worship him, to bring honor and glory to him. Listen, I know because of past experience, there's a bunch of you here that trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's wonderful. We're going to spend eternity forever together in heaven. I'm, I'm rejoicing, looking forward to that. But I also realize in our worship service, oftentimes there's people who have doubts and questions, and that's okay. I also know that there are people in the past, and maybe even this morning, who are atheists or agnostics. I'm glad you're here. I just want you to hear me say this very, very clearly. That this Jesus is not make-believe. This is not some fairy tale. This is documented fact. And the reality of it is, the promise is, whoever will trust him as Lord and Savior will go from life here to life everlasting. There's one thing that I think we can all agree on, and that is our life, our time here on this earth is limited. Nobody gets out of here without dying unless Jesus Christ comes back and gets the church. That being said, I hope that there's a confidence that you have this morning that when that moment comes, you're going to be with Jesus. I mean, I, I just need you to understand that I have that confidence. I want you to have that confidence. And that confidence comes not because I'm such a good person because I'm not, all right? Jane will tell you, I'm naughty, okay? (laughs) But it comes from the fact that I trusted Jesus as my Savior. I love him so very much. And the day's going to come when Charlie Ilias is going to check out of this world. But that's okay. It's graduation. I'm going from here to be with Jesus. And I'm as sure of that as if I was there now. And that's only because I know the truth of this. And I've seen the signs And I'm ready, watching, and waiting. I just close this message by asking you this one question. Man, are you as sure of heaven as if you were there? And if you're not, that's okay. I'm glad you're here. Talk to me. Talk to one of us here this morning. If you got questions, that's all right, too. I'm glad for questions. But I just want you to know this Jesus who has made a way for me to have eternal life. Pray with me if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the wonderful opportunity to share your word in this day. I thank you for the examples of Mary and Elizabeth and Zachariah and the shepherds and the wise men, all who were wise enough to worship you. And Lord, you were Mary's Lord and Savior, and you're Elizabeth's Lord and Savior, and I thank you that you're my Lord and Savior. So today, as we close this message, if there's somebody here this morning who doesn't know that, somebody here this morning who's not sure of that, Lord, I would love to talk with them. Man, they can come forward while we're singing or they can come forward and talk to me afterwards or they can call me or somebody else here can lead them down that path of how to be sure of this eternal life. Lord, I love you so very much and I thank you for what you have done in my life and I just pray that for every person who hears my voice. I pray that they too would have that assurance, that peace, that realization that when they stand before God, it's going to be okay. Lord, it's your church. Have your hand upon them. We ask all this in your name and for your sake, Jesus. Amen. David. Join us as we stand together. Let's worship as we close the service.
holy name of Jesus Christ. Pray with me if you would. And now may the peace that transcends all understanding continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, both this day and forevermore.